welcome to Flying Wheels and to a dealer only auction. Today I'm going to take you in with me to find out what we can buy at an auction with up to $55,000. Now you are watching our $400 into a Ferrari flip series where I started with just $400 and now I have $55,000. That is amazing to say that out loud. We just sold our Aston Martin DB9, our six liter V12 Aston Martin last week. We have $55,000 now. Now the question is, do we spend it all on one car? Or do we kind of break it up and maybe not put all our eggs in one basket? Diversification is key. If one car doesn't sell, I'm stuck holding the bag on all that money in one vehicle. If we buy two, then we can kind of flip flop and roll them over as they move, which has worked really, really well for us in this process. Nevertheless, today, I'm gonna to take you for a walk around the auction. We're gonna see what we can come up with for 55,000 and under. And you guys are gonna come along with me. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's go buy some toys. buy old Subarus, but a 2015 with 118,000 miles, a Subaru WRX and a manual transmission, this is a WRX Premium, will fetch a good number. Now these things are still getting like close to 20 grand, even though it's a 15 with 100,000 miles. It looks very similar to an STI, it has the STI shifter on it, the big wing, and what's nice is like stock exhaust, doesn't have a Cobb tuner. I don't buy old Subarus. There's just too many kids that play with these things and tune them and beat them up, and then I end up getting stuck holding the bag with a blown engine or a car that smokes or knocks. I don't buy them. But clean ones that are stock, I'm all in on this Subaru WRX right here. Oh my goodness, right off the bat, I think we found our answer. This is a 2015 Chevy Camaro ZL1. Now I believe this is a supercharged 6.2 liter. It's automatic though, that's kind of a bummer. Oh my goodness, 9,000 miles. What's crazy though is there's no like, there's no real flair to this car. There's nothing besides the suede and red stitching that really screams anything amazing about this car. I mean, it's like a Camaro SS, big deal, big whoop. I think the big whoop is this right here, the supercharged LSA engine. That is pretty amazing. Now, second car I looked at might be all of our money. Now, the way I figure it out is there's a barcode right here. I use my laser appraiser app to scan the barcode and it comes up with values, the mileage, the trim, retail on a ZL1 they don't even have them it typically sells for 46,000 retails around 52,000 I should pay around 37,000 35 would be really really nice that's on the really really low end and then I can retrieve the auto check history report to owners with no accidents now I would love to have a ZL1 Camaro I mean granted that's probably the same price as an Aston Martin I would way rather my Aston Martin than a Chevy Camaro. But I think that will be an easier sell than my Aston Martin was. 9,000 miles is pretty incredible. I could have that and possibly buy something else that's fairly inexpensive too. Today could be a really, really cool day. Hey, teaser alert. Later in this video, I'm giving away all of those bespoke post products from last week's video. So stay tuned to the end where I say who the three winners are. Don't listen to anybody in the comments. There are some scammer scammers in the comments, but I will say who the winners are from last week's video later in this video. But let's get back on with the auction. Good. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I might leave with a ZL1 Camaro. That would be incredible. Tesla Model S, Model Y, Model Y. Probably not in our budget today, especially at 2020. That will be over the $55,000 price range. Now here's another thing to consider too. I could sell 10 $5,000 cars probably faster than I could sell one $50,000 car and I could make the same profit, the same margin on a $5,000 car as I can on a $50,000 car. So if you're looking to get into the business or like buying and selling cars at all, inexpensive cars is more realistic. Like yes, a ZL1 Camaro is more fun. It's more like, there's a lot more wow factor to it, but the margins are tiny. Like I might make possibly three, four, five grand on it, but it cost me $50,000. That's a 10% return. I could buy a $5,000 car and sell it for 7,500. That's a 50% return. That's incredible. 
So you could do that 10 times instead of one. So just consider what you're buying and what market you're in. Now the other thing is there's a lot more headaches that come with $5,000 cars than $50,000. Like I could probably buy that Camaro and just sell it the way it is without doing anything. So weigh the positives and the negatives. $5,000 cars require work and have headaches. $50,000 cars shouldn't. Now part of this whole experience is I've been buying what I like. I buy the cars that I really, really enjoy. Like for example, this BMW 6 Series Grand Sport. This is a 2014 with 58,000 miles. Is it the most sellable car? No, but is it a really, really fun, cool car? abso freaking lootly tootly I would way rather be driving this during our Ferrari flip series, which makes me like my job a heck of a lot more than like that Impala or the Highlander or the Tacoma or the Chevy. It just makes the job more glamorous. It's not more sellable and the margins aren't as good, but it makes me happy. And if you're not living to be happy, what are you living for? Speaking of 650s, this could work for me. Now, I typically stay away from these. This is a 2009 with 95,000 miles. These cars scream headaches. I believe this is a 4.4 liter BMW V8. The valves go, like the valve seals go on these and they burn through oil terribly and then you get blue smoke out the back. Now this car doesn't even have the key in it, which scares me. Like super cool, it's spring, convertible, BMW. Like this is a nice car, it's awesome. And when these were fairly new, I really, really wanted one. But they're really problematic and crazy expensive to fix. And not having the key in this car, like, why not? I can't check the top, I can't check the nav. We're not buying this one. All right, there's always something nice towards the back corner. There's some dealers that bring some nice stuff over this way. Like, is that an S5 and another Camaro SS? So we have a 2015 SS Camaro with 108,000 miles in a six speed. Now this car is really sellable because it's an affordable V8 Camaro and a standard transmission. This is something I'm definitely gonna keep my eyes on. Something about this is pulling me towards it. And it's probably more for a smile than any other reason. Now I wouldn't be caught dead buying this thing to resell. Is this chalk paint? Like who painted a car dead flat? Look at this. Wow, that's crazy. Ruined what was once a nice car. All right, here's something amazing. $55,000. That is like, realistically, if it was 2019, we're in Ferrari territory. I probably could have got that 360 Modena that I wanted in the 50s to 60s three years ago. Now, not so much. Everything's overinflated, and that's part of the problem. Like, if I buy something like a Ferrari right now, I don't know. We're in deep trouble. Like, we are going towards some troubled waters and I've been through it 10 years ago. Some of you guys have never seen what a recession looks like. You don't want to get stuck with a Ferrari when things pop, when the bubble pops. 2018 STI, 33,000 miles. This is a beautiful car. So to be quite honest with you, I'm going to keep moving this process forward because it's a video and it's a series and the theme. I'm not just going to kill it, but I don't recommend any of you guys be spending all your money on expensive stuff right now. I would sit on that cash and I'm telling you firsthand, I've been through this, I've been through a recession, I've been through a housing collapse. We're in for some weird stuff. I said it a year ago, nobody believed me because everything was skyrocketing to the moon, but you gotta come down too. It can't just be all up. And some of you guys haven't seen it, just be aware. If you have cash, I'd recommend sitting on it and not spending it buying fancy expensive things like I'm building a house right now up north and I'm regretting it because there's no reason I should have a second house at the peak of a market while interest rates are climbing so hey Kia Stinger check that out that is cool looking sorry I got distracted anyway real quick what I was saying with my rant was you're way better off sitting on your cash right now hanging on to it when the bubble pops and everyone's unloading and everything comes down to a bottom that's when you buy your stuff. Like I bought my house for 300,000 in 2010, seriously. And the bank gave me $10,000 back. So I bought it for 300, they gave me $10,000 towards closing costs. It's worth 712 years later because I bought it at the right time. I mean, three years before I bought it, it was a $450,000 house. Just knowing when to time things, which isn't always possible, but do beware, like you don't wanna buy things when they're high, buy things when they're low, so save your money and then buy things like, not yet, we'll see. Hey, check it out, 2019 Corvette, 30,000 miles, 
This looks like a 2LT because it does have head-up display and it has the premium wheels. Nice interior. It's got an old man interior, the gray. I feel like this is more my dad's style than my style, but I do like the black. Let's see what it's worth. 30,000 miles, 2LT, 67,000? That's insane. That's not great. Okay, here we go. 60. MMR is what we normally pay, 54.4. 537 49 so I should try to get it for around 49,000 and it has had one owner. Oh, on a topic, shout out to Laser Praiser. If you ever want to use them, if you can go to like the uh, Android and iOS app, download them, mention my name for Flying Wheels. You get some type of like discount for it if you want to try it out. This isn't a paid advertisement and pay me to tell you that. I use it, I like it, so. Shout out to Laser Appraiser. Now, I don't want to go through this whole video series like picking apart one car at a time. So I make notes. I actually log it into my app and then I go back. I'll go back after this video and check them all out and uh, like really write down the numbers. That way I know what I'm looking at when they go through the lanes. Hey, a Raptor. Raptors are fun. These things are coming down in value. If you can get these with the 6.2 liter, like this is the last generation of the V8. Now they're that EcoBoost 3.5 with timing chain rattles. 131,000 miles, affordable truck, probably like 20 to $24,000. Now, obviously that's a big gap, but I'd rather it at the 20 than the 24. Check out this 90, 1966 Ford F100. Twin beam Ford custom cab. Cool. Reminds me of something Clint Eastwood would drive. Get it? What movie? I'm sure that was an easy one. Look at the shop manual. Oh, an A-Track with grease playing? Cool. Alright, the auction has begun. Let's go inside and see what we can come up with. And hopefully, we head home with some cars today. This Subaru is calling my name. I really like this thing. This STI is awesome. I like the wheels, but they're all scratched up. Huh, maybe I'll leave it an STI. Look at this Perrin wing, wow. Actually, is this the stock wing with Perrin supports, or is it a Perrin wing? I don't know. So the market is high. See that Subaru going behind me right there? That is a 2015 WRX with 105,000 miles. I should be around 13.6. That is like auction pricing. It sold for 15.7. Now, how is a dealer making profit off of that? I have no idea. So I, I didn't buy it. Remember what I said about BMW engines? Remember that BMW? 27.5 it sold for. Honestly, auction values, like when I scan it in my app, it says 20 to 22,000. Wild. ZL1 Camaro is up. It's at 46,000, which is pretty fair. If you want to be 40, you don't want the ride. 30,000 years from now, get it out. I basically just traded an Aston Martin for a Camaro. I can't do it. Yeah. I mean, this says I should be around 35. 41 is pretty fair. Yeah. All right, Corvette and Raptor are going through soon, but to be honest with you, this thing is going to get all the money. I mean, like retail money. It's tough to buy anything at the auction these. All right, Corvette's running through. I should be at all my money, $49,000. $49,000 seems like so much to me. Oh, it's a 3LT and it's a 2019. 49000 is low. 53.7 is accurate. It's at 58. Even that's over my budget. I guess I'm not getting a Corvette either. And even the Raptor sold for 23 and it says I should be 18 to 20. Damn. All right, here's the problem. This is exactly what I was saying a little while ago. Do not get caught holding the bag. This Corvette driving by me, 02, 50,000 miles. I was buying those for freaking 13, 14 grand two years ago. That car just sold at auction for 20. How much can you resell that car for? Not much, it's crazy. I can't buy that car, a 2002, 20 year old Corvette for over $20,000 and expect to resell it for a profit. Don't get stuck holding the bag with expensive, overpriced, overinflated cars right now. It is wild. I would rather leave here with nothing than overspend on something. This is fascinating. Someone went wild with the Plasti Dip. Oh my goodness, how did I miss this? This is a 1989 Ford Mustang Fox body, but not just that. It is a McLaren designed Mustang convertible with 64,000 miles. This car 
is amazing. I can't believe I missed this car. I'm so disappointed in myself. Oh my goodness, look at how it is so 80s and absolutely perfect inside. Oh my goodness, this would have been such a cool car. The only thing, and I'm gonna go over this GT350 in just a second. The only thing is I wouldn't have wanted to sell this. Wow, it is perfect. I mean, flawless. This is such a beautiful car. Wow. And let's discuss this. This is a 1984 Ford Mustang GT350. Has nothing to do with Shelby. It's commemorative to the 64 and a half. So this is an 84 and a half. This is a 20th anniversary to the Ford Mustang. 5.0, they did come in a four speed. I think not a five speed. I think it came in a four speed and a five liter with like 160 or 180 horsepower. It thing was an absolute dog. I actually bought one of these in a convertible when I lived in Florida, when I had my dealership down in Florida by accident. It looked like a complete rat. The top was down, the white was just faded, but I saw this down low, that GT350. And honestly, me and every other dealer thought somebody just slapped it on there. That's where I learned about the 84 and a half Mustang GT350. Nothing really cool about this car besides that it's, you know, whatever, an old Mustang Fox body, similar to the Mustang that was in Goonies. That was a convertible, but same like style and era Mustang. So I am in a 2018 Kia Stinger with 42,000 miles. This is a 3.5 liter, I believe, twin turbo with 365 horsepower. My numbers are roughly accurate, but they could be maybe a little off. Car is super cool. Now I was just the high bidder on this at 25 grand. This is easily a $36,000 auction car. 25, 25, 25. Somebody raised their hand. I bid up to $27,000. Somebody else jumped in. Now there's three bidders fighting against each other. I stopped at 30,000. The next bid was 30,100 and they are the high bidder on an if, meaning they didn't sell it. They have to check their numbers and see if they can sell it for that. There's like a $4,000, $5,000 margin right there if I can get this thing. So if it falls through and I can get it for 32, I could do really well and have a Kia Stinger. It's kind of funny we're going from an Aston Martin to a Kia. But listen to this. It has a blow off fellow. I'm sure that's not factory. Hmm. I really want this car. I'm going to follow up on that car in the auction. Hopefully it doesn't sell to the other buyer and then I can come up a little bit and leave with a Kia Stinger. And that'll be the next car towards our Ferrari flip series. A Kia, Aston Martin to a Kia. Oh hmm. uh, yeah, there's a chance that uh, we can go look at it today. Yeah, sure. I actually just bought a 2011 Yukon XL that's just as nice as the Suburban, but has more options. So this one might work for you too. So I have a whole and, bunch uh, you can look at. What's the uh, What's the size comparison with the Yukon? They're identical. It's the same truck. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. The Yukon is big like the Suburban. The I Yukon XL is the same size as the Suburban. Yeah, we'll look at them when we get there. Great, I'll bring it bring it home now. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Bye. Wow. I couldn't have planned that any better. Those people called me on a Suburban that I just sold yesterday. I also have another Suburban and I have this. So like, I couldn't have planned the timing of this conversation and that phone call any better. So I'm going to bring this Yukon back to my shop, see if I can sell it. And then honestly, I will. If they want it, we will then bring it into the shop to get detailed, serviced, inspected. That way we know we're selling something safe. What's good is it has a current New Hampshire inspection sticker on it and it's clean. And I pulled a history on it, no accents on this one. So I might sell this before we even list it up for sale. That is amazing. Different topic. I kind of wish I bought this. 08 Hemi SRT8. What was that like? Bumblebee, Rumblebee, Super B. SRT8 Charger, 112,000 miles. What is this thing worth? I have no idea, but man, I was so close to bidding on it, but it was leaving the lane as I saw it, so I can't raise my hand with it. Like, I don't even know what these things are worth. What is this thing worth? I would love to hear it in the comments down below. Well, I was gonna take the Rogue back to my shop, but looks like I'm gonna have to take the Yukon back to my shop because we might have a potential buyer for it already. So here's kind of a cool situation. I'm back at the auction right now. I am on trip number two because I got the Yukon back to my shop in time for people to come look at it. Now, I sold that F-150 
yesterday to somebody, but the dilemma was he had a rental car, but he couldn't get a ride to my shop to pick up that truck because he had a rental car that had to get dropped off somewhere else. So I coordinated with him where I met him at the rental car place in that truck. He dropped off his rental car and then brought me to the auction because it was about 15 minutes from the auction. So now I'm in my second vehicle. He actually got his rental car back. I got rid of the truck. I got paid on the truck and he got his truck without having to find a ride. So it's like complete synergy. People helping people, it worked out really, really well. Now I'm in my car without having to bring my truck and trailer. And I get to find out if the Kia Stinger is still for sale. Okay, good news. On the phone with the auction right now. The Kia Stinger did not sell. It was like 31,000. I don't know what they want. They didn't even counter the previous high bidder with the price, which means they were way off. If they're so far away, sometimes a seller won't even counter offer the buyer. He might not be here. I'll have to reach out to him on his cell phone and get back to you on it. Yeah, sure. Can you get back to me? I am still interested in it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Okay, so I just got off the phone with the auction. They're going to find out what the seller wants for that Kia. And like, really, I loved it at 30 and 31. I don't really want to be at market value for it just for a sake of videos. So... I don't know if we're gonna get this Kia or not. T only time will tell, we'll find out tomorrow morning. Well, I just got a text back from the auction stating the Kia Stinger, they're going to be posting it on OVE and they're looking for $36,000. OVE is like a dealer only online based auction website. 36,000 is over market value. Market value is 35,000, so the Kia Stinger is a no-go. So to put an answer to the question, what will $55,000 buy you? I can tell you exactly what it'll buy you. A bunch of overpriced cars. Sure, you can go spend $55,000 on anything, but that doesn't mean it's a good deal. And when you're in the business to make money, you can't just go buy nonsense because you have the money. You have to buy it at the right price, at the right margin. Walmart's not going and paying retail for their stuff to resell, otherwise they'd be out of business. I can't go spend $60,000 on a Corvette that's worth $63,000. Not to mention that's out of my price range. The Camaro ZL1, that today might have been a fair deal, but it just didn't wow me. Like, big deal. It has a supercharger on it. It wasn't anything amazing. Like, at least a Hellcat has like a wide body kit. A Shelby GT500 has a completely different body package on a Mustang. That Z01 looked like a Camaro SS with a supercharger. It doesn't do it for me. So for now, the search continues. What do I spend $55,000 on? Do I buy a bunch of inexpensive cars? What do I get? I want something cool, I want something interesting. The search continues. And welcome to the giveaway where today, no sponsors, I'm not gonna hold you up, I'm just gonna announce the three winners from last week's Aston Martin Bespoke Post video. Three of you guys are gonna win. Now let me tell you, there are scammers in the comments. Do not believe anybody in the comments if they say they won, they're just trying to charge you for shipping and they're gonna get you to pay and then you got scammed. That's not me. If you don't hear my voice right now, say your name, you didn't win anything. But if you do hear me say your name right now, you three are the lucky winners of last week's Bespoke Post giveaway. All right, ready? With no further ado, one. All right, let's see. Alan Davis, love the Aston, goes perfect with a Bespoke Post, would make a great pair. Congrats, Alan Davis, let's keep going. Aggressive mediocrity, bespoke post. Glad to see the $400 in a Ferrari series moving along. Congrats, aggressive mediocrity. All right, let's go. Final winner is, I have to look for the name. Okay, Zebgora48, bespoke post subscription has always interested me. Unfortunately, they have always been a little out of my price point. Well, I'll tell you what, Zebgora, try it out first because it's pretty cool. See if you like it and then you can subscribe to their monthly giveaways like Christmas gifts every, every week. So congrats to you three. I'm gonna always try to give you guys free stuff every time I can. Thanks for watching. Let's get on with the video. If this video was interesting, at all helpful or entertaining, do me a favor and give me the thumbs up, the like button down below. Why do I always ask for that? Well, if you comment and answer the questions I ask in the comments section or give me thumbs ups, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. It helps boost the algorithm so more people get to see my videos, so my channel grows, so I can put out better content for you. So it like works both ways. Like you help me, I help you, and we both win. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.
Hey everyone, thanks again for watching. So the search continues next week at the auction again where we have to find something by $55,000. If you hit that circle in the middle, that is to subscribe. Boxes to the left and to the right are for best recommended videos for you. See you later and adios.